Okay, so good morning everyone. Uh, today we will continue with our presentation on the breast calcifications. What do we need to know? This will be the second part of maybe three or four parts. Let's see how much we can uh, see and uh, study in this uh, presentation. Uh, we will, uh, last time, Last, the first presentation we are talking about the causes of benign breast calcifications uh, which we will continue today the second cause of benign breast calcifications are vascular calcifications these are usually these are usually dense linear parallel tram track like calcifications most commonly seen in where in postmenopausal women okay uh, in postmenopausal women with atherosclerotic disease and that means that you should report it because it might be an indication of coronary heart disease يعني sometimes you can diagnose coronary heart disease from a mammogram that's very interesting thing uh, when seen in younger premenopausal women it's usually in diabetics okay when only a portion of the arterial wall is affected or when small vessels are involved, the calcifications can simulate those occurring in ductal carcinoma in situ, the DCIS, okay? At this stage, the calcifications may be linear, irregular, variable in density, or have some sort of linear uh, orientation. We'll see some examples of that. And occasionally, the smaller vessels may calcify and they appear quirky, like uh, undulating, okay? Uh, and these, the borders usually are well defined and they have a loosened center. Remember the calcification in the wall of the vessel. It's not in the lumen. So you have two walls with a loosened center, okay? To help you to, to, to know that these are vascular calcifications. And the smaller, the, uh, these smaller arterial calcifications to, tend to be more common in premenopausal, the small arterial calcification. The big ones usually in the postmenopausal with atherosclerotic heart disease. The small ones are in premenopause, more common in premenopausal women, and usually they have dense breast because they are young, and can fluctuate in density from year to year. Sometimes get small, sometimes get less, and sometimes completely resolve. You do it on one year, they are there. The next year, they are gone. This is consistent with small vessel micro, uh, small vessel calcifications. And usually, they do not have a history of diabetes or atherosclerotic heart disease. They're small arterial calcifications, not the big ones. For example, you can see in this example, this is a mediolateral oblique views obtained four years apart. There are four years difference between this one and this one, showing these linear parallel tram track like uh, calcifications. Uh, they are correlated with the underlying corona disease. Usually, the, uh, this occurs usually bilaterally, okay? Usually in both breasts. Uh, they correspond to the underlying coronary artery disease and should be described. You can see this was less dense and then after four years becomes more dense and more prominent. Tram track, linear calcifications, usually bilateral, not, sim not necessarily symmetrical, but mostly bilateral because due to the systemic atherosclerotic disease. You can see here uh, this MLO view showing linear calcification on the screening. This was just screening. You can see some tiny, I don't know whether it's obvious or not, this tiny linear calcification here. Okay. Uh, so magnification views are, this was category zero, needs further evaluation. Just small, tiny linear calcification, uh, any bilateral zero. Okay, so magnification views were taken uh, on the MLO and the cranial cord uh, spot compression views demonstrating this quirky, you can see it's here linear and it, here it's quirky serpiginous, small vessel calcification, serpiginous consistent with small vessel calcification, it's by rods, no, so in a, we, are, we did the compression view, so now it's by rod two, okay. Yep, the same thing. This is a screening view, and then further evaluation by double spot compression and views. Always the linear piece of the right of the shadow is always calcification. Sorry, I didn't miss This linear shadow. Okay. Do you think of calcification? It is calcification, Okay. This, no, no, this linear appearance, this thing, 
this thing it's a calcification what kind of calcification what does it mean this needs evaluation here it's a very thin linear calcification can be within a vessel can be within a duct can be within a tumor can be dystrophic can be whatever a lot of things which one zero you need further evaluation what kind of further evaluation you can do biopsy you can do ultrasound you can do compression views uh, special views whatever M uh, mri different from according to the case in this case they what they did they did a compression magnification view they magnified it and you can see the the classification is much more obvious now here okay as a quirky serpiginous calcification confirming that these are in a vessel and shifting from pirate zero to pirate two okay now i have nothing to be worried about i can send the patient home and that's it okay in this example there are also vascular calcification associated of this linear calcification with artery is easily established you can see this is the arterial walls okay and you can see this calcification is within the wall one of the walls of the artery okay you can see it's an artery and within one wall there is a calcification and this is a pyrads two excellent again you can see vascular calcification with a small quirky okay they're just yeah, serpiginous quirky calcification with smooth margins and some of them have central lucency if you look carefully like in here you can see some very faint central lucency which is very good indication of a benign pathology okay uh, also can you, you can see uh, similar calcification diffusely scattered in both breasts indicating pyrads two let me hear two you have to put a category on every image pyrads zero one two three four five and six and we explained in the last uh, presentation what each of them means now other cause of benign calcification that we that makes our lives a little bit difficult uh, is dystrophic calcifications dystrophic calcification is the body response to some event there is something within the breast a disease that heals by calcification okay so accordingly they can vary in size shape and density no two of these calcifications are alike they are very different from each other okay coarse dense large irregular have can have associated areas of lucency associated with benign conditions like fat necrosis okay fat necrosis from where does it come you need fat necrosis bill breast prior trauma burns surgery radiation therapy healed abscess hematoma something that heals by calcification we call it dystrophic calcification okay so no two are alike when they diffuse when they are bilateral indicating the presence of what of a systemic disease underlying inflammatory degenerative metabolic process for example renal disease hyperparathyroidism they cause calcification in soft tissue all over the body one of the parts of the body is the breast okay so when usual dystrophic calcifications are unilateral when you see it bilaterally this indicates systemic disease like renal failure hyperparathyroidism whatever okay also can be seen in the fibrous capsule forms around the implants the breast implants in conjunction with the granulomatous response usually due to foreign body like silicone or paraffin injections and fortunately now this due to the improved quality of the breast implant and the containing material it is less common to see this thing previously when they started they used to inject silicone within the breast directly without a capsule just direct silicone injection causing very difficult uh, calcific response inflammatory response okay uh, now it's totally different but we have to put it in the differential diagnosis some dystrophic calcifications can this demonstrate linear appearance commonly found in areas of dense stromal fibrosis when there is a fibrosis the calcification will be some linear 
appearances and the margins keep that in mind this is the important part they are the margins the edges of the calcification are irregular and jagged jagged يعني like the edge of the knife you know jagged okay some uh, of the calcifications forming acute angles if you see an acute angle it also can help you in a given cluster some of the linear calcifications are well defined with central lucency so if you notice till now anything that has a central lucency is good news when you see central lucency that's good some of the dystrophic calcifications can be large coarse popcorn like any big ones okay like a popcorn developing in fibroadenomas they are dense coarse maybe unifocal multifocal unilateral bilateral in the initial stages of hyalinization with calcification there can be pleomorphic clusters with or without associated mass you can see the mass or you not see the mass first they are pleomorphic that's different shapes pleomorphic a lot of shapes means and then they develop into popcorn calcification with time you'll see When you do sequential mammograms after one year, two year, three year, four year, when you follow it up, you can see the progressive deposition of calcium forming a larger calcification. In some women, these calcified fibroadenomas are palpable. Not always, sometimes. Okay? For example, how would you describe these calcifications? They are high density. So, coarse. They are developing in the fibrous tissue and in a non-predefined anatomical space. It's not following any anatomy. It's just there. Okay? Like big ones here and here and here and here. Okay? They variable. They are variable in size, variable in shape. No two are alike. Huh? Can be focal, limited to the area of surgery or trauma or diffuse or bilateral when related to underlying metabolic disease. By rods, لا two ماكو three two coarse is two dystrophic is benign two okay okay we can put the three it's still benign but it's two okay تمام yeah it's a big popcorn you can describe it as a popcorn calcification no problem again now other form of dystrophic calcification these are dystrophic and vascular calcification both in the same uh, view uh, MLO and craniocaudal spot magnification showing the linear calcifications demonstrating a linear orientation you can see these are following some linear pattern here and here Hello, editor, so showing linear pattern here and here in addition to the, this what was this this is a vascular calcification as we said previously okay these are definitely by rats too now what about this this showing linear distribution huh if you look carefully some of them have what central lucency central lucency is good we need to have central lucency to classify as a benign pathology huh although the diagnosis was suspected based on the mammographic appearance of having a dystrophic calcification huh however it was given what's going on uh, i hear that when that happens uh because they are ha they have some linear pattern and they were not so sure they given it as a birads four, which means I don't know. Okay, we said birads four. Simply means I don't know. Maybe benign, maybe malignant. Anyway, it looks benign, but they did a biopsy and it was benign. So restaged from birads four to birads two. Okay, downstage we have it. Now. Here we have some dystrophic calcification in a nodular focus of hyalinized fibrosis. You can see there's some increased density here, ill-defined hyalinized fibrosis with some amorphous. It does not have any specific shape. They're just there, okay? Faint calcifications uh, with a spot compression view showing a cluster of linear uh, 
classification with indistinct borders. This is the idea. The borders are not well defined. You cannot draw, draw it. The borders are indistinct. When you see, when you look really carefully, you can see there are some central, what? Central lucencies here and there. And central lucency is good. Benign, Benign exactly. Yeah, Although, well, excellent. So, however, uh, since they're amorphous here, there are some features of amorphous appearances. They were given a Bayrats 4, and biopsy is done and restaged into Bayrats 2. Okay? You can't depend on having the central lucency to, to classify it as Bayrats 2. Okay? However, when it's amorphous, uh, you might a little bit be on the safe side and decide to do something else, like a biopsy or FNA or whatever. Okay? Another example here of a dystrophic calcification, you can see this is a compression magnification view demonstrating a cluster of linear calcifications here and here, okay? With central lucency, excellent. Central lucency means good, means by rods, excellent. And it was stable on follow up. Can be vascular calcification, can be dystrophic calcification, can be, anyway, it's a by rods too. I don't care what is the cause as long as it's benign, okay? Now, does this need any explanation? It's like so easy. These are popcorn-like calcification, indicating hyalinized or calcified what? Fibroadenoma. fibroadenoma, excellent. This is a big fibroadenoma here and a big, and another fibroadenoma here. This is by rods two, excellent. Now, what about these? Let's see. These are, uh, uh, the images are taken on uh, time zero, after one year, after two year, after three year, you know, sequential follow-up, the same patient, okay? Uh, there are two clusters of calcifications, here and here. And you can see it on the follow-up images that they are, what? Increasing, okay? In both the two clusters, okay? Uh, and you can see after three years, the, some of the calcification are coalescing. Compare this with this. They are fusing together. They are enlarging, okay? Uh, if you look carefully, you can see there are some jagged edges with acute angles. The edges are like the edges of a dagger, you know, the the knife-like, the serrated edges. These are, this is good the jagged edges. And since it's higher, uh, and coalescing and becoming more coarse and coarse on follow-up images after two, three, four years, this indicates a Bayrads what? Two. Excellent. Now, what about this? Also, it's dystrophic calcification. The, you can see the evolution of the calcification. This is the initial mammogram. Uh, and this is two point, you know, two and a half years later, okay? And the first uh, cluster, of course, high density calcification, no linear forms or linear orientation. They're just there, nothing, not linear in shape, not li linear in orientation. And after two and a half years, after the initial mammogram, you can see the progression of the calcification uh, with forming a large coarse density forming this appearance indicating since it's becoming coarse this is a benign pathology by rats two okay now another form of benign pathology is ductal calcification okay it's also benign but different part of the breast different uh, histological component ductal calcification is due to the precipitation of calcium salts in the entrapped secretions in the subsegmental part uh, that's uh, develop, leading to developing to development sorry of a fusiform calcium casts in the dilated ducts these calcifications are very characteristic we will see some examples you'll never forget it they appear as rod like cigar shaped coarse high in density smooth border not jagged the borders are smooth and diffuse bilateral and they point toward the nipple. Okay? The direction is toward the nipple with central lucency when they occur 
in a peri aqueductal distribution. If around the, the duct, they have a central lucency. If they are within the duct, they don't have a central lucency. And both of them are benign. No problem there. They reflect the presence of ductectasia, also called the, the different names. Some people call it periaqueductal mastitis, secretory disease, comedomastitis, plasma cell mastitis, mastitis obliterance. All of them are different names for the same thing. Whichever you say, it, it's okay. For me, I report as a plasma cell mastitis. If you report as mastitis obliterance, okay, no problem. It's the same, okay? This process is often bilateral, diffuse, less commonly unilateral, and rarely focal. When that happens, usually bilateral and diffuse. Okay? Uh, sometimes you can see some branching in the calcifications and the borders are smooth. Okay? And if the calcifications form the periaqueductal part, we see what? Central lucency, because they are around the duct. The duct lumen is lucent. Okay? Coarse calcification associated with dense fibrotic breast tissue in the subarular area reflecting the what's called burned out plasma cell mastitis. When they burn out, you know, like uh, the activity is gone within them. These patients may describe a tender mass in one or both subarular areas. Tender mass, painful mass, okay? Keep in mind, this plasma cell mastitis can present with white, thick, cheese-like sometimes foul smelling bad ugly smell uh, discharge from the nipple okay again it's plasma cell mastitis can be present like that okay yeah any can present with bad odor cheese like uh, uh, discharge from the breast can have plasma cell infl inflammation idiopathic inflammatory changes yeah it happens usually but well, maybe some sort of environmental cause here. I don't. No, no, no. Inflammatory. No. Inflammatory. Okay. It's just mastitis, inflammation of the breast. Okay. So, for example, you can see here. This is a craniocaudal view demonstrating the large rod-like calcification diffusely involving the breast, and they have some branching points, and they are pointing toward the nipple. You can see it's all pointing toward the ripple. If you look carefully, you can see some branching points here and there, uh, and they are large, they, are sm they have smooth borders. Usually it's bilateral. Why not? Okay. In another patient, you can see uh, the, the, there are some rod-like calcification here and there, and they also point toward the nipple, and after a follow-up, after two years later, huh, two years later, many more rod-like calcifications have developed in the pre-existing calcification. They are larger, they are more dense, and you can see here a focus of what kind of calcification here with the jagged edges? Dystrophic calcification has developed also. It was not present here, it developed here. However, both of these, the plasma cell mastitis and the dystrophic calcifications are by rods too. Excellent. Now, Again, you can see these are large rod-like calcification. Rarely it happens focally, like here. Usually it is diffuse and bilateral. Rarely happens in a focus of the breast, part of the breast, okay? Uh, the calcifications are dense, smooth bordered. You can see they are cigar-shaped. Okay, it happens, <laughs> no problem. No pleomorphic calcification. Uh, are seen in the surrounding tissue. You can see just there, big cigar-shaped, smooth-bordered, focal. These are, again, corresponds to plasma cell mastitis or mastitis obliterans or whatever you want to call it, call it, okay? By rats, two. Wake up! Still, we have like another 15 minutes, 10, 20 minutes. See it? Anyway, what, how would you describe this according, based on what present, what on the past? These are large rod-like calcifications. They are coarse, dense, <laughs> smooth border, <coughs> pointing toward the nipple. Some have branching points, okay? And you can, if you look carefully, you can see some central lucency here. You can see it. These are consistent with 
periacudectal mastitis, plasma cell mastitis, mastitis obliterans, whatever you want it. These are birads. What do you mean? I mean, I Now, lobular calcifications. These are calcifications developed in the SNI. Mashi? Within the SNI. The part that excretes the milk. The, like the alveoli in the lung, the SNI in the breast. Okay? Something like that. They are round because the SNI is round. They are diffuse, relatively high density, peer-like. Like a peer. Round, calcific focus. Okay? They have a smooth border. Also, it's benign. All of what are we talking about is a benign pathology. Okay? If the lumen of the gland is small, the calcification may be punctate because it's small. Okay? In some patients, can occur in tight clusters reflecting sclerosing adenosis, or sometimes we call it fibrocystic disease, or sclerosing adenosis. It's the same. No, no difference. Okay? Can be diffusely scattered bilaterally. They call it thousand points of lights. Any romantic name, thousand points of night, okay? You can see here, points of light can happen within a cluster, okay? They are round, punctate, uh, clusters of monomorphic, high density, well defined round calcifications. You can see they are very well defined, they are round, they are high density, okay? Uh, these are in a different patient. Uh, showing monomorphic calcification scattered diffusely of the in the breast parenchyma here and here and here and here and here diffuse but they are monomorphic all of them are the same shape okay uh, the calcifications are round well defined and high density and this is in another patient and you can see the thousand points of lights very typical huh these are all category no I mean Allah no I mean Two. So, when they associated proliferation of the perilobular stroma, there is, as you seen, the sclerosing adenosis or fibrocystic disease. Sometimes can be seen fibroadenomas, and uh, the calcification will be pleomorphic clusters and can be indistinguishable from these seen in cases of DCIS, ductal carcinoma in situ. Sometimes can be indistinguishable from DCIS. In this case, you gonna give it a BIRATS 4 and you will need to do something about it, okay? Usually, yeah, you can see the same thing in ductal carcinoma in situ, the low and intermediate grade, not the high grade, usually, okay? The uh, a subgroup of calcifications occur in fibroadenoma. It's fairly distinctive, it's, yeah, yeah, it had some distinct pattern. They occur in high density, chunky, what's called coral like. What what does it mean coral like? The in, in, in the ocean, the these are called coral, okay? Like some like a tree. We will see some examples of it, okay? Look at it in the Google, see some images, coral like, okay? Like a uh, okay? They have jagged edges, some form acute angles. Uh, these sometimes develop rapidly in patients with fibroadenoma during or after the completion of chemotherapy. A patient have breast cancer, she's taking chemotherapy. During taking chemotherapy or after finishing chemotherapy develops this kind of calcification in a fibroadenoma. Get it? For example, let's see here, what's that? This is a density, if you can see here. It's a fibroadenoma. Huh? The, the proliferating citroma will compress and deform the acinar spaces, and the calcification within the acinar spaces will take different shapes. If you look, these are what's called the coral like appearances. Huh? They're high density, chunky, with jagged edges. The edges are irregular, not like the plasma cell mastitis, they are jagged, serrated, okay? These are birads two, two, 
This is in the fibroadenoma. It's a distinctive pattern seen in fibroadenoma. It's more common in patients after completion of chemotherapy, during or after completion. Come on. But in fibroadenoma, the, the fibroadenoma is about us too. Patients might have a breast cancer somewhere else, on the other breast, on other part of the breast. Okay? Yani, patient had left breast carcinoma. She's taking chemotherapy for the left breast carcinoma. She had an fibroadenoma in the left breast or in the right breast, beside the cancer. By chance, both of them. Okay? So, she will develop this calcification within the fibroadenoma. Man علاقة بالcarcinoma. تمام? We are talking about benign calcifications. واضح? بس إذا patient عنده history مال carcinoma وقطع لها calcification ما كشف واحد يعني يعني عبرها كبير. No, not saying عبرها easy. Okay? Do your investigations. Do your ultrasound, your mammogram, compare with the previous images, ask for other exam. Anyway, at the end, you should reach the diagnosis of Bayrats 2. Okay? I'm not saying send her away. Do whatever you like. Reach the diagnosis. <coughs> it's your job. Tomorrow? Now, regarding here, this is a different patient. It's also coral-like. You can see it's like this uh, like a tree or bush of trees or something like that huh? high density jagged edges and branches at an acute angle if you can see the angles are v acute here and there these are also category or by rods too okay now what about this these are coral like high density chunky calcifications with jacked edges here. These are category or by rods? Two. Two. Excellent. And another different patient. They are also coral like, high density, jacked edges, branching at acute angles. These are the points that makes you think of a benign pathology. Okay? Uh, as we said, this can develop after chemotherapy or within chemo uh, during chemotherapy here you can see there are some dense calcification with some associated central lucency some of them will describe as bubbly okay again they are benign in, in definitely benign these are not malignant in any way okay uh, what about here this needs a little bit let's focus they are linear some if you look carefully, might have a central lucency. I'm not so sure. Maybe central lucency, maybe not. If you look carefully, you need to focus. Okay? Uh, they are mixed with some coral like calcification here and there with some acute angles. So, here the diagnosis of fibroadenoma was suspected. Okay? But it was given a BIRATS 4. A biopsy was done and it comes back with a fibroadenoma, so restaging or regrouping into BIRATS2. Okay? So you can see not always it's typical like that. Sometimes there can be mixed of coral like and linear calcification. You might be, well, is it two, three, or four? Biopsy. Biopsy, I know. Bi Bi four, okay. Bi 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 linear, linear calcifications. It's it. They. You know, it looks like a bi uh, a fib calcification hyalinization within a fibroadenoma. Looks like. Are we sure? Sure, hundred percent to give it Bi-Rats two. We are not sure, hundred percent. So. Should we send the patient home? Should we do a biopsy? Should we do something else? Further evaluation means, in this case, you can see it's linear. It's not very uh, like coral-like, like here and there. It's not typical. So the best thing is go for a biopsy, get histopathological confirmation. Sorry? 
for what? They did a screening mom screening mammogram. They saw this, did the biopsy, and from the screen it was viral Yeah, okay. all of them are screening. I'm I talking about screening. Two, two kinds of biopsy no, no, no. Okay. It's screening. This is screening mammogram, okay. and then biopsy, and so then, then exactly, okay. exactly. <coughs> so, lobular calcifications can sometimes uh, appear as smudgy or ill-defined amorphous. What do you mean by smudgy? You know, when you put some ink on your finger and you smudge. Okay. Okay. Something like that. Okay. Smudge. So these are amorphous. It doesn't have any shape. You, it's not round. It's not linear. It's not coarse, popcorn-like. It's just a smudge. Okay. Uh, amorphous can usually reflect the presence of sclerosing adenosis or what we call it fibrocystic disease. They can be associated with DCIS. And when that happens, usually it's a low or intermediate grade. Okay? So, when they are diffuse or bilateral in patients with dense tissue, diffuse bilateral. Dense tissue is difficult. So you need a follow-up. Don't send her home just like that, come next year. Keep in touch with her, okay? Because you might miss something. It's a dense breast, okay? When they are unilateral or focal, huh? if you see it, if in a dense breast, we follow it up. If it is unilateral, focal, even more suspicious. Huh? So biopsy is recommended. When you see these amorphous calcifications, if you compare it with the previous. There are they are newly developed. If it is in an unusual location, like for example, lower inner quadrant, it's unusual part of the breast to have this, then go for a biopsy. Beyond the safe side. It's in you. Okay? You can give it by rats four. For me, I will give it by rats four C. Like on the high end of by rats four. So what are the causes of amorphous calcifications? First Milk of calcium, which occurs within a cyst. And these have different appearance between MLO view and craniocaudal view. You see, the, you see them as amorphous in what view? In the craniocaudal. When you do a medial oblique MLO, you see what's called the teacup sign. You see that's fluid level, calcium level. Okay? So these are easily solved. You can just take an MLO view and that's it. You have the diagnosis. However, you can see it in DCIS, more in the low or intermediate grade without central necrosis, the low grade type, okay? For example, here, if you look carefully, you can see there is some increased density. There is calcification here. What is the shape of this calcification? It's amorphous. It doesn't have any shape. It's a smudge. Masha. Okay? Indistinct. Exactly. Okay? You can see scattered throughout the dense parenchyma. And when they did a lateral view, the same appearance is present. It's not layering, no, no teacup appearance, okay? This was bilateral diffuse process, okay? After five years, there is no significant change. It's still amorphous, maybe more dense, but amorphous, okay? So uh, when this process is diffuse and bilateral, we follow the patients at annual intervals. When focal, we recommend the biopsy. Okay? Uh, here you can give it as a BIRAT4. But after follow up, after a few years, and it's the same and nothing happens, you can shift to BIRAT2. Or if you do a biopsy, if it is focal, again, and the biopsy comes benign, you can shift it to BIRAT2. Okay? Uh, these calcifications are tightly clustered, well-defined, tiny calcification that appear amorphous because we are not able to see, to see them individually. They are so small that our eyes and our imaging, we cannot di distinguish them from each other. Okay? So, first, uh, you can give them barats 3, barats 4, and you have to follow them up to confirm that they are not something you might go up you go by rats four by rats five or you might go down according to the follow-up results 
So I think we will stop here now. We will continue next time with calcification associated with masses. And here the things become even more interesting. Thank you very much.